Good morning, Real Life Church. We are so excited and honored for you to join us for our online experience. Won't you join us as we worship this morning?
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me.
Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope you enjoyed worshiping with us. Now for a few announcements. Hey everyone, I'm Kyle and I just wanted to take a moment to welcome you and to thank you for joining us today. Here at Real Life Church, our goal is to help you on your spiritual journey to know God, to find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference in the lives around you. We wanted to take a minute to tell you about some of the things that are happening here at Real Life Church. We believe that God has gifted each person with unique gifts and talents to fulfill the specific purpose He created us for. If you want to make a difference right where you are, join us for Growth Track. Growth Track is our quarterly process that is designed to help you take your next steps in your relationship with God and reach your full potential. The next Growth Track meets February 3rd immediately after church. There will be food, a chance to hear from Pastor Jason, and most importantly, lots of fun. You can sign up in our lobby or at our website at livereallife.com. Small groups give each of us the opportunity to develop deep, authentic relationships as we pursue purpose and community together. Our winter semester is in full swing. To sign up, all you have to do is head over to our website to see the online directory. There you can search for the type of group that is perfect for you and your schedule. We can't wait to hear how God is changing your lives this semester. Surge Night of Worship is coming up on January 27th. We are excited to unite and seek the heart of God together. Invite a friend to come with you as we bring our worship and go after God with everything we've got. Thanks again for joining us this weekend at Real Life Church. Our hope is that you leave here feeling encouraged and closer to God than ever before. Be sure to connect with us on our website and on social media to stay up to date with everything happening here at RLC. We hope you and your family have a great weekend. Good morning, everybody. We want to thank you for joining us for our online experience this weekend. We are continuing our message series called Life at the Core. Today, we're going to be dealing with core value number three. You know, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about values. We've been talking about what it means to live life from the core, from the inside of us, learning to live from the inside out. And a lot of times in life, we are predicated to outside circumstances. We base our decisions, we base things we believe, we base our values upon exterior situations. Well, God has a greater plan for us. He has a greater plan for us as individuals. He has a greater plan for us as a church that we would live these values and God would be uh, glorified through it. And so um, today our value is this, we serve wholeheartedly to make an impact. One of our core values around here is that we would serve wholeheartedly to make an impact. You know, I was reminded uh, in my study time thinking about we're on this fast, and a lot of times during the fast, I preach on food. Um, let's be honest, I talk about food a lot, but this particular moment, I was thinking about the cheeseburger. And I don't know about you guys, but back in the day, back before in the 70s, back in the 60s, you didn't have a lot of options when it came to your cheeseburger, okay? You'd walk in, you know, you got your McDonald's, you got your two all beef patties, uh, sauce, lettuce, cheese, you know, it was standard. That's what you did. Or you'd go to the little diner and they didn't have many options. It was 
it was hamburger meat, some cheese, and some, and some lettuce, and maybe some mustard and ketchup, and that's it. And that's, you, and that's the way you got it, okay? You didn't have an opportunity to change anything. Well, in 1973, everything changed. Burger King came up with this motto, and it was, have it your own way. And so now, back in the 70s, 73, you go into Burger King, you start picking stuff off. And you start, you could say, you know, I want a, a Whopper with cheese, minus lettuce, minus, minus mayo, add tomato, drop a jalapeno. And so all these, all these options you have to have it your way. When well, the 70s, this idea of consumerism really began to invade the earth. And uh, I, heard a, I heard a business guy uh, talk about this, that, that about 40 years since 1973, the customer has become king. And really in our society, we have become a generation of people that are consumers, okay, versus being a distributor or being a, a fountain that we are, are a conduit by which resources and things flow. A lot of times in our life, we're focused strictly on being a consumer. And I heard it put it this way, and here's, here's a thought when it comes to companies. It says this, a company will promote their quality, their value, their style, their service, their selection, their convenience, their savings, their performance, their experience, their low rates, their friendly service, their name brands, easy terms, affordable prices, money back guarantee, free installation, free admission, free appraisal, free alterations, free delivery, free estimates, free home trials, and free parking no cash, no problem, no kidding, no fuss, no must, no risk, no obligation, no red tape, no down payment, no entry fee, no hidden fees, no purchase necessary, no one will call on you, no payments until September. And don't forget to pick up your free gift, a classy, deluxe, custom designer, luxury, prestige, high quality, premium, one of a kind pencil holder. Yours for the asking, no purchase necessary. Why? Because you are that important to us. And really what's happened in America is we live with the idea of consumption, of being a consumer. You know, and, and sadly, consumerism have, has bled over into the church. It has bled over into the local church. And again, consumerism is this. It is the promotion of the customer or the consumer's interest. So what we've done, instead of elevating God's interest, God's ideas, and God's plan, we've elevated man's, man's ideas, man's consumerism, man's, man's mentality. And I believe if there's anything in this value that I want you to understand, and during this series, if there's a mentality that I want to break as a pastor, as real life church, that when people come to our church, that the mentality is not consumerism, but the, the mentality is, is the church is not about us. Church does not exist for us, but we are the church. We're not a building. We are a people, and we are the church, and we exist for one sole purpose, and that's the world. You know, when you became a Christian, really, church stopped becoming about you. You stopped being the point. Well, God in his word declares to us that again, the church is not about us. Consumerism says that we sit and we feed and we can be fed and we can enjoy God's plan. Yes, that's perfect. God has a great plan for us. But I want to read a passage in John chapter 4 I found very interesting in the life of Jesus. Verse number 31, and here's what he says. He says, meanwhile, his disciples urged him. Rabbi, eat something. Okay, he's in the middle of this fast. He's in the middle of this miracle moment. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know not nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. See, Jesus had a different mentality. The disciples were concerned about Jesus and food. He thought, man, somebody, Jesus said, look, I don't, I don't have need for that right now. My food and my nourishment is coming from somewhere else. And the disciples had this mentality, well, who slipped in, who slipped in the five piece? You know, why is Jesus not hungry? Well, Jesus had a mentality. He says, my food, my nourishment comes from something else. See, the thing that we have to understand about Jesus is the disciples were concerned with consumption. 
And see, in our life today, we have a mentality that is fill me, fill me, fill me. And what actually filled Jesus in this moment, or brought Jesus nourishment in this moment, Jesus was in this moment filling others, which is what brought him nourishment. See, disciples, the disciples were concerned with consumption. They said, Rabbi, eat something. We need, to, we need you to consume. We need you to take care of yourself. We need you to eat something. The disciples were concerned with consumption. They were thinking that if he would eat something, then he would be fulfilled. And Jesus was telling them, listen, my fulfillment and my nourishment does not come from a natural consumption of things that I necessarily like. And so Jesus' nourishment was different. He, he pulled from somewhere else to live. And I really believe that the nourishment that Jesus walked in and the fulfillment of Jesus' life had everything to do with his ability to wholeheartedly serve somebody. To really step out, not just do a job, not just do a task, but a heart of a servant. See, the nature of contributing to something goes against our human nature. We've been trained to consume. For example, you don't have to teach a child to be selfish. Why? By nature, we are self-centered and selfish. Nobody wakes their child up in the morning and says, listen, today I'm going to train you to be selfish. I'm going to train you to be self-centered. That everything is going to be about you. You know, you think about a child. You think about, you think about when somebody takes their toy or says, can I use your toy? What's the first thing that comes flying out of the mouth of a child? That's mine. That's mine. That's my toy. Why? Because we're self-centered. We're taught to consume. We're, we are taught within society and with our lives that we are to consume, and that brings fulfillment. I really believe Jesus is, has a higher calling for us as a church, as an individual, that there is a higher calling that we must think about when it comes to our lives and living life from the core. I was uh, in a meeting the other day, and Melissa Ferguson runs our guest services. And she was just, we were just talking about guest services, and she started talking about real life church. And she said, one of the reasons that her and Mike have continually to come and to serve faithfully at Real Life Church. She made this statement. She said, what I love about Real Life Church and the people is we are not in it for ourselves. It's not about us. See, she made that statement, and then a moment I thought to myself, that is true. Our value system has to become, it's not about us. It's about people that we are trying to reach. Bottom line, we are not spiritual consumers. We have to become spiritual contributors. Not a spiritual consumer where we just get our spiritual thing on and we're filled and God fills us and we become a consumer seeking the greatest thing that will make us feel the best. No, we got to become a contributor. You see, there's an example in the Bible called the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is this. It has a lot of stuff coming into it, but this, it has no outlet. Therefore, it's dead. Anything within it dies. The salt concentration is very high to where you as a human can float in the Dead Sea. The difference between the Dead Sea and the Jordan River is there's an outflow. That it has a place to go. And I really believe that as Christians, as people, that we have to have an outlet. We can't just be a consumer. We have to be a contributor. I really believe that my prayer for us as a church and you as an individual living life from the core is that our nourishment at Real Life Church comes from serving others wholeheartedly. That we're fulfilled and that doing the will of God is the fulfillment and the nourishment that we need. And so I really believe that God, as we serve wholeheartedly, there are some byproducts of being a spiritual contributor. And, and I, have, I have a few of these that I want to go over with you. But in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 7, the Bible says this, Serve wholeheartedly. As if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. Notice the, notice the progression. It says, so serve wholeheartedly as you're serving the Lord, not people. 
Then he says, notice what he says, the Lord will reward each one of you. The question this morning is where do you want your reward to come from? Do you want your reward to come from pleasing people? Do you want to do, you wanna, do, you wanna do things and find your nourishment from others? Or do you want to find nourishment in serving wholeheartedly and the Lord will reward you? Now, I'm not sure about you, but I know me. I would rather have a Lord's reward than a human reward because the Lord's reward is limitless. Man's reward is limited to its influence. So here's a few things, a few byproducts of being a spiritual contributor. Number one is this. Serving allows us to discover and develop our spiritual gifts. You know, we do something around here called Growth Track. We're getting ready to kick it off again in February. If you've not been a part of this, it's extremely important that you get involved with Growth Track. Why? Because we help you discover your spiritual gifts. We help you discover your personality and a place here at Real Life Church to serve. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us this. Our natural body is made up of a lot of parts, right? Each body has different parts. However, each body part serves a specific function, and they serve each other. Alone, our body parts uh, are useless, or, or they're not very useful. You cut your arm off, lay it on the ground, it's going to end up dying. Why? Because it's not connected to the body. But together... It creates something beautiful. Serving allows us, it's a byproduct, a blessing, a, a, a blessing or a byproduct of being a spiritual contributor is that you will discover your God-given gifts. Number two is this, serving allows you to experience miracles. I was reading in the Word in John chapter 2 and Jesus was at the wedding and uh, they ran out of wine. And he called all the servants together, and he said, fill these things to the brim, and then take it out to the people. So they filled this up to the brim, they took it out to the people, and when they took it out to the people, the water turned to wine, and they distributed it among the people. Well, who saw that? The servants. Those that was filling it to the brim. See, the guests may have never known that that had happened, but the servants were the ones who witnessed the miracle. I believe that you can only experience some miracles by serving. I believe there's life change that takes place at our church every single week. Whether that's a mom, a single mom that's struggling, that needs encouragement. Whether that's a marriage that's falling apart. And God in a moment speaks and all of a sudden... That married couple gets a new fight and a new hope to live and to live together and to fight for their marriage. I believe there's a teenager somewhere, somewhere in our church that, that is experiencing something of depression or something of anxiety or something of a peer pressure. And people that serve here every single week have an opportunity to experience the miracle of one thing, life change byproduct of being a spiritual contributor is miracles. Number three is this. Serving allows us to experience joy that comes from obedience. 1 Peter 4, 10, 11 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God's grace in its various forms so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Notice what he said. He says, serving is a form of of worship, it is an expression of joy. You know, we live in a society that's consumer driven, but also we have a society that is depressed. We we are the most connected generation, yet we are the most disconnected generation. We have a we have a generation of people that is driven by depression and anxiety and fear. Why is that? Is because we are a self driven society. We focus on ourselves. We focus on consumerism. Listen to me this morning. Joy comes from serving others. So if maybe today you're experiencing some depression. Maybe you're experiencing some anxiety. I can tell you the key to help break some of that off your life is to go serve someone. To wholeheartedly serve someone. Why? Because in serving comes joy. In the obedience of knowing, man, on this Sunday morning, I'm going to stand at this, this place of guest services and I'm going to welcome new people that this may be the day that they say yes to Christ or I'm in the kids ministry and I'm serving in real life kids and I'm, I'm setting up and I'm tearing down or I'm serving and leading as a teacher, or I'm leading as a helper. All of a sudden now you get the opportunity to invest in a generation of kids that you have the ability through serving 
to see their lives change. I'm telling you right now, there's no other joy than seeing people's lives change. That's a byproduct of contributing to the thing God is doing. Number four, serving helps us to be more like Jesus. When we shift our focus off of ourselves onto others through serving, we begin to see others as Jesus sees them. See, you might not be, you, you might break judgment off of you. you. You might have a critical eye and a critical spirit. But when you begin to serve somebody and you begin to be a spiritual contributor and not just a spiritual um, uh, consumer, when it's all about you, all of a sudden now it helps you to be more like Jesus because when you serve people at their greatest need, you can see them through the eyes of Christ. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 25, 40, that I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, this is what Jesus said, you have done it unto me. What's he saying? He's saying you're never more like Jesus than when you're serving someone else. Number five, serving increases our faith. The more you step across the line to serve, the more that your faith is increased. As we step out of our comfort zone, God begins to increase our faith. As we take those small steps, you know, your small step might just be serving in this area, and then it, it turns into this, and then it turns into that. I remember when I first came to my church where I was on staff at at Living Word in Vandalia. I came as a bitter, broken kind of guy. It took me six months to heal. I finally started serving. I began to work and clean. I clean twice a week, 6 o'clock in the morning. My wife encouraged me. She said, I'm sick of hearing you complain. I want you to get up and go do something. So I went and I began to serve. As I began to serve, all of a sudden I started cleaning, cleaning toilets and, and cleaning bathrooms and running sweepers and, and washing windows. And over time that turned into working with our teens on Wednesday nights. Then it turned into me leading a small group. Then it turned into me leading a, a, a growth track class. And all of a sudden, I found myself step after step. Faith was being increased. And then I went on staff, and I was asked to do something I'd never done before. I was asked to lead something that I never knew. I didn't know how to lead. It took God and faith, and this was a big faith step for me. And I went on staff, and I just started serving. Then I started working with the teenagers. I became the youth pastor, and all of a sudden, through faith, God just began to change teens' lives, and, and watching God move and emerge, and the things that he was doing, and then 2008 came, where God began to speak to me, and then 2010 came, and it was another level of faith. Can I tell you that then 2012 came, where the church launched into, into everything that it has become, but where did this thing start and continues? It starts with serving, taking steps of faith. You're like, I could never lead a small group. People wouldn't come, or, or I don't have that ability. Can I tell you that if you just start somewhere, all of a sudden, the level of faith increases. Ephesians 3.20 tells us, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, that we could ask or think according to the power that what works in you. God has a power that works in you. He has a gift that works in you. And it, it comes through serving. Your faith will increase. Number six is serving allows us to experience God's presence in new ways. I like to say it like this. Encouragement and healing go hand in hand. Can you imagine the people that walk through on Sunday mornings and maybe they just fought in the parking lot or maybe they, they've been fighting all week as a married couple and all of a sudden they walk in and they see that greeter. They see that guest specialist with a smile on their face, encouraging them that they can make it, that they can do it, that we're glad to see you, we're glad you're here. Or maybe somewhere in the worship time that our worship team is magnifying God and lifting up God. All of a sudden now, it, it allows people to experience God's presence in new ways. It allows you to experience God's presence in new ways as you begin to encourage, as you begin to lift up. And as we encourage others, they find healing. Finally, number seven. Serving's good for the soul. Studies have proven it, that volunteering or serving is so good for your mind and for your body that literally it can ease stress and depression just by serving. Tapping into your gifts, tapping into your passions, tapping into the confidence that God has placed on the inside of you. Here's my encouragement to you. Don't be a spiritual consumer. Be a spiritual contributor. Stop the excuses I think times in our life we make all sorts of excuses for not living this value. 
serving wholeheartedly so we can make an impact. Not just on Sundays. Who are you serving during the week? Is there that neighbor that needs to be encouraged? Is there that coworker that needs to be served? Maybe all of a sudden now this takes on a different form for you, but we have to stop the excuses. Common excuses. I don't have time. I don't know what to do. I, have, I don't have any special skills to contribute. They don't need me is an excuse. Here's the reality. Is the Lord doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. God uses men and women, me and you, to serve that will bring about life change. As we take on the mentality of a servant, and we say to ourselves, I'm no longer going to be a spiritual consumer. I'm no longer going to be like the disciples and say it is nourishment that comes from the outside. No, I'm going to be like Jesus that the Bible said that he laid down royalty to become a servant on the earth. That he would serve us through a crucifixion, through a brutal beating. He would raise from the dead and become our king. See, Jesus, the Bible says, took on the form of a servant. He wholeheartedly served us with the intent of making an impact. And when we are impacted, then we can make an impact. I think about Moses. Moses didn't think he was a leader or a speaker. He had excuses, but God worked through Moses to bring Israel out of slavery. David was the youngest, could have been the most insignificant one. All of all of his brothers, but God worked through David to defeat a giant and eventually became king. Paul, which was Saul, was used to kill Christians. Then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and God knocked him on his, off his horse and he became this, this apostle called Paul. And he wrote half of the New Testament that we read today. God came in and, and absolutely revolutionized his life. And he went on to become one of the most highly regarded, pro, pro, prolific church planners in all of history. God will take those that feel ill-equipped and equip them if we just position our hearts to live life from the core where we serve wholeheartedly, where we serve with an ambition saying, I'm not looking for fill me, fill me. I'm looking for nourishment by making an impact on somebody else. I think about our crew. I could list name after name after name. From Randy Alford to Eric Crawford to T.J. Souza to Dale Farney to Spencer Hassel to Caroline to Scott Moody to Debbie and Rick Young. I could go down the list. Don Perkins every single week. These folks, Mike and Melissa Ferguson, these people come in and they set our church up. Emily Littlejohn, Sonia Gentry, these people come in and they give of their time. They give of their talents. Why? It's all wrapped in one statement like Melissa said. This place is not about us. It is about us serving wholeheartedly together to make an impact. And here's my challenge to you today, is we need to be aggressive in where? In praying for and looking for ways that we can serve or help someone. We need to look for ways, we need to pray for ways, we need to sit and think how we can be a blessing to others. What can I do for somebody else? And the more we do that, the less we're going to have to deal with ourselves. The less we're going to have to deal with the mind issues. The less we're going to have to deal with ourselves. Because why? We are giving our lives away. I'll close with this scripture and then we will pray together this morning. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Bottom line today, folks, is this. Be a spiritual contributor, not a spiritual consumer Allow the inheritance of God to be your reward, not the reward of man. Reward comes from the Lord to those that serve wholeheartedly. So today, I want to I pray with you. Maybe you feel like, I need to take a next step. 
I need to get involved. I need to begin to, to begin to think bigger. I need to have that moment where I can think about how can I bless somebody? You know, we have these acts of kindness cards. We don't, we don't just do this to do this. We have these acts of kindness cards where you can go out and you can show somebody a little of God's love. You could buy them a coffee just to serve them. You don't know if you buy somebody in the, in the line a, a meal and behind them you leave this card and it's that single mom that, that couldn't, is just barely getting by and she just needed to hear how much God loved her. You know what that is? That's called serving wholeheartedly to make an impact. God has great plans for our church. As we continue to live life at the core, He will continue to make an impact through us. And so let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and thank you for each person watching. Wherever they are, God, wherever they're in this moment, I pray, God, that we would examine our hearts. I pray, God, that we would move out of this thing of spiritual consumerism, and we would want to be spiritual contributors, where we serve wholeheartedly to make an impact. God, we know that as we step across the line, knowing within ourselves that we don't have, we don't have all the equipment, but you will equip us. That God, today you encourage someone's heart to make that step. I ask today, Lord, even as there'll be those that are, that are watching today that may not know you. I pray today, God, as they watch, that today they will make a decision to say yes to God. And so today, maybe you're watching, maybe you're watching today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe today's the day. Maybe something within this message said, you know what? Jesus came to serve that my life could be changed. Maybe today is your day. Maybe today is the day that you make that decision. And so if that's you, as you're watching, I want to take a moment. I want to pray for those that are going to make that decision to say yes to Christ. And so, Father, today, I ask God that you would move in. There are those that are watching today, God, that need a fresh encounter with you, that need to know you. And today, right there, God, wherever they are, sitting with a cup of coffee, sitting on their couch, sitting with their, their, their spouse today, Maybe they're watching in their kitchen. I just ask God today that you would invade their hearts right where they are. And today, God, they would say yes to you. And God, I pray as they say yes, maybe they lift up their hands and say yes to you. Maybe they, maybe they just, maybe they just uh, touch their chest and say, God, I ask that you would move in. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. And today I make you Lord of my life. I ask that today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. If you said that prayer, would you do me a favor there in the comments below? Will you let us know if you said that prayer for the very first time? Or maybe today you're like, man, I really want to take that next step and serve. I want to begin to do that. Will you also leave us a little comment there and we'll get in touch with you on how you can do that. Again, thanks so much for joining us this weekend. We hope you have an amazing week. Thank you for joining us for today's message. If God is impacting you through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can do so by clicking in the link in the comments. And don't forget to let us know what God is doing in your life by visiting us at livereallife.com. Thanks for watching and have a great week.